Hi, I'm Christy. Welcome to the Critical Care Certification Channel. Today, I'm going to discuss with you how blood flows through the heart and how we can identify what type of murmur we might be hearing when we assess our patients. So let's get started. Okay. Blood flows through the heart first by entering into the right atrium from the superior or inferior vena cava. Once it enters the right atrium, it's then going to go through the tricuspid valve and enter into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it's going to go into the pulmonic valve, into the pulmonary artery, and to the lungs. It'll exit the lungs through the pulmonary veins and enter back into the heart, into the left atrium. From the left atrium, it's going to go through the mitral valve and into the left ventricle. The left ventricle is then going to eject that blood through the aortic valve into the aorta to be sent out to the rest of the body. Now, by using a couple of rules and a mnemonic device, you should be able to do the same thing I just did instantly. Let me demonstrate. First of all, let's talk about the heart valves. Okay, you have your tricuspid valve, pulmonic valve, mitral valve, and aortic valve. When blood enters into the heart, it doesn't go through a valve. Okay, so it doesn't matter if blood is coming in for the very first time into the right atrium from the inferior or superior vena cava. It doesn't enter through a valve. Blood is only going to pass through a valve under two circumstances. When it goes from one chamber to another or it's going to exit out of the heart. Okay, so let's think about this. When blood leaves the right atrium, it's going into the right ventricle. It's going to pass through the tricuspid valve. There, case that met our definition. Blood went through a valve to get to another chamber. It's also, from the right ventricle, going to go through another valve, the pulmonic valve, into the pulmonary artery. Note that blood is actually exiting the heart at this point. So, it must go through a valve. Now, once the blood is in the lungs, becomes oxygenated, it's going to come back to the heart through the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins are going to empty the blood back into the atrium. It doesn't have to pass through a valve. Blood's coming back into the heart. Now, once in the left atrium, However, it must pass through a valve to get to another chamber. That's going to be your mitral valve. Now it goes into the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, it's going to be ejected through the aortic valve into the aorta because that's an exit point. Blood is now leaving the heart. So again, just to, just to recall what we just went over. When blood enters the heart, either from the right side or the left, it does not need to pass through a valve. It only needs to pass through a valve when it's going from one chamber to another or from a chamber to an exit valve outside of the heart. Okay? So if you keep that in mind, the next thing you need to do is just learn the sequential order that blood passes through the valve. The first valve is going to be the tricuspid. Second valve is going to be the pulmonic. Third valve is going to be your mitral. Your last valve is going to be your aortic valve. Okay. So, there is a neat way to remember that. And... 
It's called Toilet Paper My Aorta. Ha! Huh. But you thought I was going to say something else. Actually, the something else is what the mnemonic device is. But my mom's still alive and I just couldn't say it. Okay. So let's just take a look at another slide. Okay. I like this slide because it gives you a better view of the valves. So let's go over it one more time. Okay. Blood's going to come in through the vena cava into the right atrium. As you can see, there's, there's no heart valve. From the right atrium, it's going to go through this tricuspid valve because it's then going to go into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it's going to attempt to leave the heart, but it must pass through the pul pulmonary artery. Okay, so it's got to go through the pulmonic valve. So once through the pulmonic valve into the pulmonary artery, it's going to go out to the lungs to become oxygenated. It's going to come back in to the heart from the pulmonary veins. And it's going to dump the pulmonary veins. It's going to bring it right back into the left atrium. It does not have to pass through a valve. From the left atrium, in order to go to the left ventricle, must go through a valve. We're at valve number three mitral valve. Blood enters into the left ventricle and it's going to be ejected through the aortic valve into the aorta because it's leaving the heart going to the body. So not depicted in this picture but the aorta the aortic valve would be you know up underneath here you can't see it but that just gives you an idea. So I hope if you'll pause this video and think about it and practice it, I promise you, you'll never have a problem again remembering the exact order or sequence in which blood flows through the heart. I promise that if you commit to learning this, it will help you down the road when we move on to the concept of hemodynamic monitoring and what all those numbers really represent. Which, by the way, I'll be going over in a future video. But for now, let's move on and start talking about heart valve problems. Okay. Before we get into the identification of murmurs, I want you to take note of the two pictures presented on the screen. Okay. This is just another picture of an internal heart. But notice, remember what you just learned. Tricuspid, pulmonic, mitral, and aortic valve. That when you compare that to how you actually listen to a patient, you're going to listen to a patient by first starting at the area where you will best hear the aortic valve, then you're going to move to the area where you best hear the pulmonic, tricuspid, and then the mitral. This confuses a lot of people, and so you need a way to get that straight. And just to realize that when you're auscultating heart sounds on your patient, the sequence that you're doing that does not correspond with the sequence of how blood flows through the heart. Okay, so a good way to remember the sequence of how you're supposed to auscultate your heart sounds in case you forgot is I like to use all physicians take money and that helps me to remember that I first need to start over the area where the aortic valve is move to the pulmonic go to the tricuspid and then over to the mitral Keep in mind that a murmur is nothing more than the sound that is made when blood is flowing through a stenotic or regurgitant valve. It gives you that whooshing or sloshing sound. Okay, so what is a stenotic valve? Well, 
the stenotic valve is just simply a valve that somehow has either inflamed to the degree to where the exit hole has become just too small. And so blood is impeded. It has a hard time getting out of it. And a regurgitant valve, if you remember what your heart valves look like, they contain leaflets. That's what actually makes them a valve. And in a regurgitant valve, those leaflets are getting floppy. And so what happens is blood is actually sloshing back into the chamber that it was supposed to be exiting out of. In either case, this is a bad thing. So how do you tell the difference between a murmur that is caused by a stenotic valve or a murmur that's caused by an insufficient valve, regurgitant valve? Well, let's take a look at the next slide. Okay, let's take a moment to review what actually is going on when we hear our first heart sound, S1. Okay, so if you remember, S1 is where you're going to first start hearing the love. And then when you get to S2 is where you hear the dub sound. Notice how it, the cor how it corresponds to the EKG. So your S1, the love, is actually happening at the time the ventricles are starting to contract. And you know this because there's your QRS complex. And a QRS complex is showing that mechanical activity of the heart as it's the ventricles start to contract. Okay, so one of the concepts that you really need to get down is that when you're listening to someone that has healthy valves and you hear S1 and then you hear S2, you should hear absolutely nothing in between 